Hello. So with any luck, I've uploaded a video about uh, Nurse Death, the one who said that Tory voters should not be resuscitated and, uh, and discussed what she was talking about. Now I'm going to be talking about what Dan Wooten and his uh, co-hosts or guests are saying about this, this whole issue, which has uh, somewhat... Uh, it, it, well, it's fired up a lot of people. Anyway, look, all kudos to her. She agreed to be interviewed by a GB News reporter. So um, here's some of the interview here. Said what you said uh, to Jeremy Vine on the Channel 5 show. Do you stand by it? Do you apologise? The problem, yet again, I've opened my big mouth. <laughs> So she says she has a big mouth and shoots it off too often. Well, um, yes, but I, th well, obviously she let the cat out of the, the ideological cat out of the bag there. Let's carry on. Unfortunately, if you say something in the media, it seems to be taken and clipped um, for Twitter and can be manipulated. Now, for sure that this was not clipped for Twitter or manipulated. The whole thing she said was put up as she said it. And uh, this is the beginning of where I will say this woman is um, somewhat less than able to assess her own, her own conscious, conscience. All right, let's carry on. If the entire clip is seen, I was actually trying to defend um, nurses. You're not defending nurses by telling them that they shouldn't resuscitate somebody who's voted Tory. Uh, first of all, how are you going to know? Uh, so the whole sis the whole idea is wrong. Uh, even realistically, operationally, it's wrong, uh, as well as uh, morally wrong. And, and, and this is a problem with the Labour Party in general, people who support the Labour Party in general. There are obviously more intellectual types, but it seems to attract uh, people like, uh, like this person who cannot really examine themselves. And she says she's compassionate and then talks about something like this. Um, in this case, she appears to be quite sensible and rational, doesn't she? But she has uh, tweeted out about Brexiteers, uh, calling them idiots and evil and, uh, you know, just bad people. So uh, she has a, a type of mindset and obviously the type that gets carried away by rhetoric. She says that the NHS can't deliver. Uh, she doesn't mention that the NHS was in trouble under the Labour Party because anything that it, it happened under the Labour Party, well, there's an excuse for that, but not if it happens under a Conservative uh, Party. And a 40 pence in the pound, which is how much we pay for our uh, National Health Service, that's a lot of money. And there's something wrong with it if it's costing that much. Uh, you know, I don't know how much the army costs, but uh, how much the armed services cost, but they use a lot more expensive equipment, as expensive as uh, looking after sick people is. I'm quite sure that an aeroplane, uh, a fighter jet or something, costs a lot more than uh, maybe a couple of hospitals. So 40 pence in the pound means that there's something really bad going on in the NHS. How much do you want the country to spend, really, to give everybody the sort of care that she thinks uh, everybody should have? Obviously, that's not going to happen. Right, let, let's carry on. And you um, see why people might think, well, believe that what you said is absolutely outrageous, though, that if they feel they're going to go and get treated by a nurse or go into hospital I've, and they'll have to hide their political leanings. I've underestimated um, people's ability to actually understand a joke. <laughs> I've underestimated a people's ability to understand a joke. Uh, well, that wasn't a joke, was it? That was her soul 
popping out. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but if you have voted Conservative, you do not deserve to be resuscitated by the NHS. You said that that particular comment was a joke, but a lot of people have highlighted your Twitter posts from mm. going back a year mm. and even your Facebook posts. One post you said... Now, I'm going to cut it here because they, they put her Twitter posts uh, up uh, on the screen. And... Um, and that gives her name as well. And as I said, I'm keeping her name out of this. But she she calls Boris Johnson a murderer. And, uh, it, you know, it's that sort of intemperate language where you can see she's got carried away by her own idealism and her own rhetoric. You conducted yourself in that manner? No, I'm, I'm not happy with how I've conducted myself. I think, um, you know, it's very difficult to get your... No, she says she's not happy about how she conducted herself, but she's been caught now, that's all, and she's lost her job. I don't think she would have worried about it before. Listen to her. You've lost your job. I have you? lost my yeah. job, yeah, yeah. And I think that was right of them to do so because it gave non negative connotations to the company. Now, this is where I disagree with Dan Wooten quite uh, strongly. Well, first of all, he says that she did come out and explain and uh, and she deserves some credit for that. And, and yes, I, I agree. Now, look, I actually really was disgusted by her comments. At the same time, I respect the fact that she was prepared to come out, mm. explain what she had to say today. And this might surprise some people. I, I don't know how you guys feel, but I hate this whole culture of people losing their livelihood because they've yeah. made a controversial uh, so comment. So Dan Wharton says that he doesn't agree with cancel culture and for that reason this woman should not have lost her job. And that's where I disagree. Not because of the cancel culture, but because this is somebody who is in a particular position. This is different from the cancel culture idea. Uh, you might make a case for not cancelling a a waiter who has objectionable opinions. Uh, but this is a nurse. When I, whether I'm a conservative voter or not, when I go into a hospital looking for care, I have to have complete confidence uh, in the medical profession actually caring for me, irrespective of what they think of my personal habits or behaviour. Um, I should be in no doubt at all. And she has introduced that doubt. She's introduced that doubt for everyone. She has done an enormous amount of damage in what she said because everybody heard it. And uh, for that reason, she shouldn't be in that profession anymore. She should be seen to have lost her job for saying that, if only because it is the only way we can reassure people in some way that nurses who feel like that cannot be employed in the health services in any way. This isn't a matter of cancel culture now. This is a matter of people feeling safe in a hospital, a place where they should be safe and where, I'm sorry to say, uh, uh, very often they don't. All right, let's uh, just see a bit more. To me, I think it's really important that the right doesn't fall into the trap of cancel culture too. Mm. Mm. No, I totally agree. I thought she was very brave to come out and talk yeah. to uh, our reporter there. I thought she was very good to do that. All right. So they're all going on about cancel culture, but this isn't a matter of cancel culture. This is a matter of protecting sick people who can't protect themselves. Now, I'm just going to uh, skip forward to something that Dan Wooten says later. Oh, oh yeah, first I'm going to, this guy here, uh, the, the fellow with the beard, he makes this point. I, I haven't gone into this woman's history uh, too much, but this is what he says. Just also <laughs> that she is an online troll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a bully yes, herself, yes. but you know what? So he points out that she has made a nuisance of herself on the internet. This is not a compassionate person. This is a person who says she's compassionate. And she says she's compassionate, no doubt, because she supports the Labour Party and she thinks that is being compassionate. 
But uh, this is the last thing that Wooten says. Apology. She's playing the victim there, okay. yeah. you know, and that's what the left does. They give totally. it, but they can't take it I, back. I absolutely agree with you, but at the same time, I want to be better. No, than no, I, so I accept her apology. <laughs> I think it was good that she made the apology, and I think she should get her job right. back. So, uh, Dan Wooten says she's apologised, she's seen sense, so... Uh, she should get her job back. And then when they say, would you like to be cared for by her? He goes, no way, no way. And, well, that's it. But it's not just her. If you look at a nurse and think that that nurse might have her opinions, that is not going to aid your recovery from whatever ails you. And it's a terrible thing she has done to the whole health service. And she definitely shouldn't get a job back. But also, um, uh, there's, uh, there's more wrong with the health service than a matter of simple funding, isn't there? And that's what we should all be worried about. When a health service becomes ideological, it is no longer a health service. And that's, that is very worrying indeed. I am Granny Opterix. I'm on YouTube Rumble, Bitshoot and Minds. I uh, let you know when I've uploaded a video on Twitter, Gab and Parlour. Uh, if you subscribe to one of those, you'll get my truly witty, um, uh, uh, brilliant uh, tweets and uh, or Gabs or Parlours. And you will um, also be notified of uploads so you won't miss any of them. Right. Uh, please help my channel by liking, sharing or subscribing or all three. And uh, you can contribute as well. Buy me a coffee. Other links below. OK, till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and T-shirts come in the Granny Opterix design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.